Hey everybody, Jem Schofield here, and today I'm with Angus. How are you, Angus? Good, thanks, Jem. How are you? I'm doing well. Good. Here we are at Fulton Ferry Landing. Amazing location. Yeah, absolutely. Loud location. <laughs> Helicopters, <laughs> kids, tourists, yeah. but really a great place to shoot and a beautiful day to talk about what we're going to talk about right now, which is what? I'm going to talk about filters. So we've got a whole bunch of different filter sizes. So yep. let's talk about filter sizes first, and then we'll get into how we mount the filters to our cameras and the different types of filters that we use all the time in production. Sure. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about these guys first, mm -hmm. okay? This is pretty common. It's a screw-in filter, 77 right. mil for the lens that we happen to be using today. Yeah. Um, really durable, portable, and affordable. Right. And we can generally also stack these filters. Yeah. So they have threads. But if we want to use them on different size lenses, then we generally have to use step up or step down rings, yeah. um, which is fine. You can carry those and use those. But it does really get into a time issue, doesn't it? Yeah. We start to get into sort of time consumption in production. Yeah, it takes a lot of time just to, to check the effect of a filter. Got it. So that's a screw-in filter. Yeah. And then I have this filter right here, and this is a 4x4, four four, yeah. right? Exactly. And then we also have another common size that we use a lot in yeah, production. Absolutely. This is a 4x5. It's actually 4x5.65, but commonly known as a 4x5. And why would we use that size over this 4x4? It'll give you a lot more coverage for wide lenses. Got it. Okay, so we do use those a lot in production. Yeah. Obviously, the screw in just screws onto your lens, yeah. and we use those step up or step down rings, but we put these filters onto our camera systems, usually using some sort of adapter system like this or a matte box system. Exactly. So let's talk about this one first. Right, okay. so this is a little less involved than a matte box system. It yep. uses uh, adapter rings that screw into the lens, yep. one for each different diameter that you have, yep. and then a filter holder which snaps onto that ring. It's very low profile and very easy to use. And much faster yep. when we're adding filters and there are two places on this particular one so we can actually use more than one filter exactly. in the system. Yeah. Okay, good. But then this is a more typical setup that we would see in video and film production which is a yeah. map box system, right? Exactly. And uh, the first thing we should really note about a map box system is the addition here of this flag, sometimes called an eyebrow, yeah. and we can use this to flag light. Yeah, really useful. Um, some larger map box systems actually have flags on the side. Yeah. Then we also have a place to put those filters. Yeah. So this guy uses frames to hold the filters. Got it. So you don't actually have to hold the glass once it's locked into the frame. Yep. So it's a lot more durable. Okay, and then it's also rod mounted here. Yep. So we can just leave that on the rod support system mm -hmm. and then we can just put filters in and out of here. And we're not tied into having lots of adapter rings and things like that. Exactly. Now the thing that we should note before we actually talk about putting filters into these camera systems is that this is a four by four. Yeah. But they do have map box systems that take both that larger size yeah. and 4x4s. Four yeah, and exactly. so you really have to consider what kind of filter system you want to go into. Totally. So I noticed that this backstage rotates. Yeah. So great for using a polarizer. So why would we use a polarizer? Well, in a scene like this, it's great because you can uh, add drama. You can bring the skies down to a beautiful rich blue. And it's also great for killing reflections in glass, water, other surfaces as well. Got it. So let's actually take a look at an example of something you guys shot earlier yeah. with a before and after. You can see here we have the scene without a polarizer. Right. The second shot we've dropped a polarizer in, but it doesn't look that different. But now we rotate the polarizer to maximum effect and you can really see it rich in that sky out. And that's why it's so important to have this rotating stage here exactly. inside of here. And we can do the same over here on this system or with a circular polarizer that's a screw in. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk now about the next set of filters sure. that everybody should have in their kit, yep. which are neutral density filters. Absolutely. So neutral density will simply reduce the light. They don't affect the color. Right. They're uh, calibrated in a logarithmic scale. 0.3 is a one stop light reduction. Right. 0.6 is two stops. 0.9 is three stops. Yep. 1.2 is four stops. Got it. Yeah. And because we saw earlier on that we can actually use filters together, mm -hmm. we can actually stack these as well. Absolutely. And that's very important. Yeah. So, same scene behind us, something that you guys shot earlier on. So let's go ahead and take a look at that footage and you can talk a little bit about what you guys did using ND to get the shot that you wanted. Yeah, okay. So when we first set up the camera, we had to set it to F22 just to get a correct exposure. Without any filters. Yeah. Where did you want to be as far as aperture? Well, we wanted to be nice and wide open to take advantage of the, the large sensor camera. Right. So ideally, we wanted 
at least four stops, if not six, of ND. So the first thing you did in this shot is you dropped in, what, a 1.2? A 1.2, yeah. Which would be four stops. Yep. But, but then, what, you decided you wanted to go even wider? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So we dropped in another 0.6, which added up to a total of 1.8, six stops. Then you could actually go from an F22 yeah. to an F2.8. Exactly. And so that got you to that really wide, shallow depth of field, yeah. um, you know, which is really taking advantage of this camera system. Exactly. Let's talk about the last filter that we're going to go over today. Sure thing. So this is another type of ND. This is a, a graduated ND. Right. It's really useful for selectively reducing the exposure in a certain part of the frame. So you might bring it in over a sky. So I see that the bottom part of this is actually completely clear. And then we have whatever the ND is, this happens to be a 0.6. Exactly. So at the point of maximum reduction, it's 0.6, and it's graduated gently. Got it. To that point. And this is a soft edge version, but mm -hmm. I know that they also have a harder edge version. Yeah. You would use a harder edge one with a longer lens and a softer edge with a wide lens. Okay, so in a situation like this, why would we use this over just a straight ND? Well, I mean, this is great for bringing the sky down to a nice level. If you want to retain detail in another part of the frame, it's really useful for selectively reducing the exposure. And another trick that is sometimes done, which is instead of having to walk a net or a scrim in, you can actually use that the other way around, Yeah, right? I mean, there's no rule that says you can't put this upside down. And in an interview setup, for instance, you can reduce the exposure up the body of your interviewee and really bring the attention onto the face. So if somebody's wearing a white t-shirt, for instance, or Fantastic something that's very, very bright, we could cut that light down yeah. and then still keep the exposure that we wanted on their face. Exactly. So that's pretty cool. Now, you actually shot an example of using a grad, right? Yeah. OK, so let's go ahead and take a look at that, and you okay. can tell us a little bit about that shot. Sure. So here you can see the scene with no filtration. Right. And you can see, as we push the filter down, the darkness of the sky increasing. Now, you don't want to bring it too far down, because you'll really start to notice that the buildings are being darkened as well. So it's a, it's a fine line. And so it's important when you're using something like a grad to make sure that you think about exactly what the shot is that you want, yeah. setting up the camera to where you need it to be, and composition is very, very important as far as where that gradation happens. Exactly. So it's not necessarily something you might use with a moving camera. It's much better for a static locked off shot. If things are moving in the frame, they might move in and out of the band of graduation and not look so great. Good. And, and then we should also mention that when we're using polarizers, we are losing light as well. Yep. Sometimes, I would say on average, what, about two stops? Two stops, although there are some that will be a little darker than that and some that will also be maybe only one stop. And when we have multi-stage systems like this, we might put a polarizer in the rotating stage mm -hmm. and then we might put an ND in the other stage. Absolutely. And use them in combination. Or a grad. Right, exactly. So to summarize, yep. we both agree that you've got to have a polarizer in your kit. It's the first filter everyone should get. Can't replicate that in post, no. and it does magic things. Absolutely. A set of NDs, mm -hmm. 0.3, one stop, 0.6, two stops, 0.9, three stops, 1.2, four stops. Yep. Get all of those, and you can do a lot of stuff. Absolutely. And then for certain situations, ND grads. Absolutely. I mean, they're not for everybody, but they make a huge difference when you do use them. That's great. Okay, so lots of different filters, mm -hmm. and you just have to determine what kind of filter system you're going to go with. Yeah. Obviously, a map box system is going to be your most versatile in video and film production. Of course. And something like this, which is incredibly lightweight, just gives you lots of versatility. Exactly. So uh, I think that's about it. We've covered a lot of ground, looked at a lot of examples. Thanks so much, Angus. Pleasure.